Hi folks, thanks for joining. Today you're gonna learn how as a regular async API community member you can become a technical string community member and what's the journey ahead of you. So I'm Łukasz Gornicki. I'm a community guardian, so-called, and um, also async API maintainer. And I was involved in the process of figuring out what and how um, to handle the, uh, the way we work at Async API Initiative. So that's why I can share with you a bit of um, details, um, but just take it into account that like, if you don't want to discuss with me these topics later after the presentation in public, here are my contact points. So if you're feeling comfortable talking in private, please do. Like we always prefer public discussions, but um, there might be situations where you prefer um, to keep it for yourself. So um, please feel free to use one of the contact points. So the plan for today is to first of all, give you a highlight of why we actually have technical steering committee um, that it comes from a open governance model that we have here. I'm going to also explain what are the like typical paths that can lead you to become a technical steering committee member. And last but not least, I'm going to cover one of the most sophisticated. Maybe that's not the best word. Um, my personal favorite path to become a technical steering committee. Let's call it this way. So open governance, what is it? What's the history? So if you don't know it yet, I'd like to let you know that at the end of March this year, 2021, Async API Initiative joined Linux Foundation. We've heard from many different areas of the project, from big tech companies, that for project like this, it's important that it reaches a neutral ground where the IP of the project is in the ownership of the foundation and best way was to join Linux Foundation. And one of the points that um, we had to fulfill to join Linux Foundation was to implement, like to, to provide in the project an open governance model that would assure that it's not a project that is controlled by a single person, but a, a group of, of people like a community. So that's why we, we started planning, uh, researching uh, what could be the best solution for us. So um, we, we came up with some principles and one of them, the main one was that we didn't want to have a founding members. Uh, we wanted to avoid approach that we could see in other projects where you set up a model governance model by um, getting a funding members that helps you of course to uh, get initial funding for the project but in exchange the funding companies also get a seat in the technical steering committees we wanted to avoid it we wanted to avoid it mainly because we wanted to make sure that um, individual contributors are equal to sponsored contributors that you if you don't have a company behind you that will bring in money to the table you still can be the member of the technical steering committee now we also made sure that we want to make decisions in a synchronous way so if you don't have dedicated people from some company to come to the meetings where decisions are being made your individual contributor you don't have so much time to the project so we wanted to make sure that the process where we make decisions is not tied to the meetings so you don't have to come to the meeting to make a decision the meeting is for the synchronous uh, alignment on the topic but for voting you have time voting discussions decision making is asynchronous and last but not least we made sure the technical string committee list is is large we have a large group of people that can make decisions so therefore, to become a technical steering committee member, in short, you just have to become a committer 
in one of the repositories owned by us in the API initiative. And um, one important thing to, to remember about technical steering committee is that we wanted to have a kind of balance of force, like um, make sure that um, every single vote matters, which means like um, that if you have technical steering committee members affiliated with the same company, uh, you can have many, that's, that's fine. But we wanted to make sure that um, one company cannot overwhelm other voters. So um, basically the number of technical steering committee members that are affiliated with the same company cannot exceed, exceed um, one fourth of the total number of the members. As simple as that. Now, yeah, committer, I already yeah, used that word. And um, what's the difference with contributor? Um, and let me ex try to explain it to you with, with some pictures, okay? So let me search for something. Not this one. Um, that's definitely how, not how it looks like. I wish there are projects that have so many committers, but, but not, not really. Um, and we're more helpful, I think. So this picture, that's not how committer and contributors work. This picture rather shows how the road construction uh, looks like in Poland. So let's let's try to find a different image. Okay, so this picture is much more accurate, but it's not 100% reflecting how it looks. Because committer and contributor, it's more collaborative. You have equal powers, equal knowledge, equal engagement, and more teamwork, let's say. So let's let's search um, further. Yeah, this this one is perfect. So as a committer, you're in a driving seat of the repo, but alone, you're not gonna drive very far. You need a lot of contributors that will help. Some will be confused. Some will try to help, even though they don't think like they know what they're doing. But don't you worry, we accept here anyone, like it's better for us to onboard every single contributor than try to fix every single thing or implement every single thing on our own. So even though as a contributor, you're not driving the car, but we're super happy to get you inside next to us. Now, what does it mean to be technical steering committee? Uh, what do you have to do? First of all, regularly help the project. As simple as that. Like if you contribute a lot and you become a committer and therefore technical steering committee member, it already means you're contributing. Just remember that you have to do it and continue doing it regularly. In, be involved in voting and other initiatives driven by the project. Now, I think that it's important to explain now what is the difference between committer and maintainer, because these phrases are usually confused. So by definition, committer is a person that has rights to commit to the repo. So it's not 100% the same as a maintainer from the definition point of view. Maintainer does not necessarily have to commit to the repo. As a maintainer, you can help repo, you can review for requests, you can review issues, you can promote the project, but still you don't have much opportunities to commit to the repo and therefore um, get into a committer seat. So at the moment, technical steering committee, by definition, enables committers in the project. We don't have yet path for people that are super much involved in us in the API. They do not commit to a specific repo, but they help the entire initiative. That was hard, that is hard to measure, to identify, 
to have clear rules how that would work so um that's how we choose to work at the very beginning to have a clear rule to scale the list of technical steering committee members we are kind of sure and um and, and aware that it's not necessarily the most friendly approach to community that long term we definitely have to find a path for people that help the project a lot but cannot commit to the project so um that's definitely something that we have to discuss long term and um, and discuss um to, to find a find a find a better way now at the moment we have 22 members in the technical steering committee so um as you know we started the process in march basically it was end of march so yeah april this year so we grew pretty fast um and the number is growing so um you're most than welcome decisions as a temporary solution we choose um to to have them on google groups because the most important was that voting and decision making is transparent and that was the easiest tool to use at some point of time and actually that's the best moment now with 22 members is that we have to start thinking of on some better solution um how to organize voting but for now that's how we that's how we did it but yeah i think the most important is like if you offer your help to the project you commit to some repo then you're also involved in voting and you you have to engage to understand what you have to vote on uh, what do you get in return one of the th most important things i think is the exposure so on async api website we've got a publicly available list of all the technical steering committee members so anybody who engage with the community um, will see your involvement now when you are being registered as technical steering committee member we collect some information not just social accounts so people can figure out uh, who you are but you can also mark if you're available for hire or not that's because we we love that we managed to set up an open go open governance model that um, respects individual contributors but also it doesn't mean we want to exploit people for for the free, free labor so um we encourage and i think i mentioned it a few times already publicly but let me make it super clear we encourage any company that would like to be present in technical steering committee that would like to have an employee that represents a company in technical steering committee to hire those that are already there available for hire don't try to find someone on the market hire them train them and spend months on investing in people to to get them in async api there are already great people in the project that you should definitely hire now as an individual contributor individual member you don't necessarily look for job anand for example um he is contributing in his spare time but he already has job and he's not looking for a new one so what he gets in return um also some help so for example me um as member of the of the technical string committee i'm gonna help anand to convince his employee to give him time that he could spend on the project and therefore then present what company he's working for i will take my time to go with anand to meetings with his um, employer explain how open source is important why it's important that they should be in the project and help negotiate like how much time they could get to work on the project in exchange why not I mean I can offer some time for some training 
about async APIs on presentation. And I bet if I'm gonna ask some other technical steering committee members uh, to help out as well, uh, they will be keen to help. So as an individual contributor that has employment, feel free to, to like connect with me and, and talk to me like, and tell me like, uh, I'm TSC member, I work for company XYZ, but um, I have to do my work after hours. Can you help? And be sure I will. And then if already TSC member works for some company and company um, is okay that person contributes during the work hours, then the company gets exposure. It's clear how many people are in the project and how much a given company invests in the project, how important it is for them. So um, I don't think that I have to explain that if company already has people in the project, they're pretty aware of how they can present it to the public, show that they're a, a good tech company investing in open source. But yeah, now let's talk about all the roads that lead to Rome. Which means we're going to talk about how to get into TSC membership. So the one of the paths that you can take is as a repository initiator. What it means? Let's take a look on the example. Michael Davis from Solas. Now he's a maintainer of few repos, but I will pick two as an example java spring cloud stream template and python patho template these repos were created in async api organization on github but they were purely initiated by his work he did like majority of it wrote templates uh, code generators from scratch basically so he initiated projects and therefore if he initiated those and maintain those automatically uh, he is a committer and therefore a technical steering committee member another example is Jorge so Jorge joined project um, in his spare time he created a CLI um, for validating async API documents he, he joined our project then we started talking and well, we already knew that we want to create CLI. So he started in uh, the project from scratch, uh, invested a lot of time into it and therefore like he became a committer um, and, um, and a technical steering committee member. And last but not least, Maciej, um, Async API React uh, was created from scratch uh, by him and the team where he worked at SAP when it started. But it started here in Async API organization and he did like majority of the work as a maintainer. And therefore, um, mm, even though after joining Postman, he, um, he still maintains it, uh, commits to it and is a committer, which means he is a technical steering committee member. But there's a path that is also called repository donor. Um, yeah, we couldn't figure out the best name for it. Um, so if you have better names, I'm all yours. So yeah, let's look on examples. Pavel, um, individual contributor. Um, aside of Async API organization uh, in GitHub, he had his own project um, that was, um, he was creating basically some tools for Java and one of them was, for example, um, a plugin for IntelliJ. Um, and he started getting community for, for the project and many people started asking like, would be nice if these projects would be published on IntelliJ marketplace uh, through official async API account, etc., etc. And we started discussing and Pavel said like, yeah, I mean, if, if I can, put the project just in async API or on, on GitHub and then in exchange we can um, uh, then publish official um, all his tools as uh, tools as official tools then let's let's do it so he basically donated the project moved the project to async API but of course um, he is still a committer in the repo he maintains the repo regularly 
and therefore he is a technical string commit member. Same case with Emiliano. During his spare time, he created a code generator for PHP. He came in and said, like, I can, I can donate it to the organization. We didn't have any PHP um, code generators. So yeah, you're most welcome. Just come in. If you commit that whoever will jump into the project will report, report issues, um, you're going to help. Then yeah, uh, come on in. You're a committer and therefore a technical string committee member. Yeah, and my favorite path repository contributor. So for example, Ludovic, um, several months ago, I don't even remember, like it was seven, I think. Um, Ludovic came into the project, started contributing to HTML template and then a lot to a Avro schema parser. And we noticed that like um, he's one of the main uh, feature providers to the project and um, he knows it pretty well. He also uses Avro and Async API in production. So the, like he presented pretty well that he adds a value to the project. He knows how it looks like. He uses it. Come on in as a committer, man. Now he's a committer and technical string committee member. Anand, again, um, we had a Go code generator in the past, but the previous maintainer left. Uh, Anand came in, spent a lot of time trying to take over the old Go generator. Then uh, we wrote it from scratch entirely, spending a lot of hours on it. Um, he presented a lot of knowledge about the uh, generator about the existing tools, the spec, and he wants to continue working on it. So yeah, you're a committer and a technical steering committee member. Jonas, yeah, he's a he's a special kind. He contributes everywhere. Um, but yeah, when he started, he he obviously did not start. Um, with his own project. He started learning project by contributing to existing ones, to parser, to generator, spent a lot of hours improving existing tools. Then he initiated, of course, some projects that he cares about now, but um, his main path to TSC was through a contribution to existing projects. Last but not least, Dale. Um, great contributor to the project but as a committer he sh he showed that he has a lot of knowledge about kafka and how it plays with us in dpi he worked a lot on reviews in different areas of the project um, and therefore he joined ludovic to to take care of the avro schema parser so basically the contributor path that i'm just talking to you about is when you don't start something new, don't just bring in your project, but you help out driving the existing ones. There are different options for contribution. It's not only code. It can be just issue reports, bug descriptions. Even though you might think it's not good, Yes, in open source, when you don't have much opportunities to use the tools, every single bug report is a blessing. Then, of course, documentation. Um, any ideas, like help in the issues. If we struggle with some solution, help out. Come in and, and, uh, and propose something. Help us with review of pull requests. Um, help to promote the project, write a blog post, come and help with designs because we've got plenty of UI. Then, of course, maintain the project regularly. Talk about the project on conferences. Give some code. Provide some good examples. Answer questions and issues because there are plenty and triaging issues is hard, takes time. And last but not least, record videos because visuals are also a very good way of sharing the knowledge about the project. 
these are at the moment most recommended and most noticeable ways people contribute to the project and we use here for for recognition a all contributor specification and um, all those different options you can apply to already 58 repositories that we have in async api initiative organization so um, there's a lot of good stuff and i'm pretty sure you can find something for you so yeah start contributing and uh, how to make first contribution it's pretty easy let's see so we pick an issue right you just go to one of the 58 repos go into issues pick one then you start working on it locally and then create a pull request then you get it merged but of course you need to iterate through that process a few times to to learn the project and demonstrate that you you can become a committer right then you're invited to join the code owner um, as a code owner and the code owner it's a technical term in github so there's a functionality that allows you to provide at the root of the project a file called called code owners and in this code owner file you specify which parts of the project or maybe entire project you own as a committer and then automatically you become a tsc member i told you it's easy but yeah um let's go much more into details right so yeah how to pick an issue like um is it really that simple you just go to 58 repos one by one all the issues i'm pretty sure it's not i'm pretty sure it's difficult um and i believe that picking this first issue is hell of most difficult stuff you could face so um let me give you some tips how you can pick an issue yeah that's that's the basic way so you 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 pick the repo like let's say you're interested with writing in typescript and some particular technology whatever so you go to this repo that represents the, a, a given tool and you try start triaging issues like go one by one understand what they're about and 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 look for something that is interesting for you also depends why you come to the project to contribute do you just want to learn anything or you have some specific mindset here you can also join prs uh, to review those um, and learn like uh, what parts of the project are involved in a in a given functionality in a given bug fix and and this way you can identify um, in which parts of the project you'd like to engage there's also a label called good first issue we're not yet an experts in using it um, that's something that started a few months ago <clears throat> so far we were using it only for hacktoberfest but now um, yeah we remember that how important it is um, to expose to community issues that um, are very well described and are easy enough to be first issues that um, they could um, engage with so um, if you find some repo where github um, um, label because it's default github label good first issue is not used there are other ways so um, of course you can join our slack we have a dedicated channel where you can come in say you want to contribute and we're gonna we're gonna tell you how and where we're gonna ask you some questions like if you want to contribute what's your area that you'd like to contribute um, your knowledge is it like more documentation or is it like pure coding like is it only java or something different um if you don't have time and enough um yeah basically enough time to to go through all the repos and find stuff on your own don't worry we're gonna help you out now we also have a contributor first live streams so it's a meeting that is broadcasted to all our social media 
it's live you can join in the chat you can join also live to to the uh, current host and um, ask questions about a specific project how to contribute and um, we, yeah we're gonna definitely help you out there um, now one of the best ways to contribute code to start contributing to a specific project is to first start uh, bringing in new uh, uh, missing tests to the project so um, in some of the projects we already regularly check the um, tests missing tests um, uh, in the project so basically the test coverage so um, you should definitely um, try to, to see um, if this test coverage is visible in the in the readme if not then just on your own check how tests look in the given project and um, if uh, what parts of the code are not covered and 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 please add those tests um, that's the best way to learn the code base through writing tests and there's also a sonar cloud used in this project so all the all the repositories are scanned for some basic issues in the code that you basically don't see as a human we run it on pr level to figure out issues but there might be situations that even after figuring out all the issues on the pr level even after merging sonar cloud does another scan and figures out there are some more issues so definitely um, please go into sonar cloud and check if um, given repo that you're inter interested with has some issues that you could fix now once you identify the issue time is to open up a pull request right but yeah first things first first once you fork your repo because we all work on forks even committers you have to configure your fork because if you aim to become a technical string committee member I already told you it's not gonna be just one contribution you need to learn a given project so you have to properly configure your fork so work is not such a pain so you basically need to make your fork work like a upstream repo that's pretty easy to handle so later I'm gonna talk about it when I'm gonna talk to you about links that I want to share with you now work on the project locally Please make sure that everything works run tests locally as well and then yeah once you open a PR it's pretty important that you get your PR title right we use here a conventional commit specification that will allows us to have automated releases so here you have an example on the screen conventional commits basically means that title of PRs and therefore the commit messages because we use PR titles as commit messages when we squash and merge PRs they have a prefix so you can clearly see that for example the the first from the bottom was a fit merge which means fit from the specification point of view that we released it like released a package as a um, feature which is a, a minor feature because there's no exclamation mark so it wasn't a major now docs for these are to explain that it's like something related purely to documentation or something more um, but it's not triggering the release so you have to take care of proper PR title and as you can see here if titles are nice and well descriptive it's pretty useful I think when you take a look on the history now every PR is tested but there are many other checks that run on the PR please always make sure that all of them are green like for example tests that they're not failing because that will speed up things if you make sure on your own that they're green uh, you don't have to involve committer to do it and his time to do it so always please uh, take it on you make sure that everything is green and um, put the work on the committer only uh, when a check that is red you have no idea how to fix 
now there are drafts and official PRs right so technically github allows you to create a a draft PR and draft PR is something that technically we configured to ignore for example for tests so if you create a pull request and you mark it as draft we encourage you to do it but do it only if you're basically not yet ready to give it for the review because we're gonna ignore draft PRs we're not gonna look at it we don't get any alerts that um, there's a new PR if it's draft and it's not automatically tested so please don't expect us to jump in into a given PR but of course if you're gonna ping us to have a look we're gonna do it now yeah get it merged but how we get alerts we have slack channel dedicated we look at it whenever there's a new pull, pull request opened so we're gonna have a look and we should notice that you opened a new PR but sometimes you need to ping us like Sergio for example you can't always wait forever so if you see for after a few days that nobody interacted with your PR especially that the tests are not running because github now blocks um, automated run of PRs if it's your first contribution and and the CI doesn't run because um, of crypto world and the um, wrong usage of CIs by people that want to uh, get some crypto so um, github does not run CI checks if you are first time contributor um, so if you see that there nobody triggered them no committer triggered your tests or you basically nobody comments on your PR for a few days no bad intentions here um, we just have a lot of work so please just just ping us for help now I told you about code owners already that we have for a given repo people described in the code owners file who's responsible for what in the project and this person will be called by github by default to review your pull request the thing is just that we did not manage yet to roll out code owners to all the repos so please have a look on the reviewers if no reviewer is assigned then it means nobody yet was pinged um, and it might take longer uh, for someone to to notice your PR so um, if you find a repo where there are no code owners please contribute them like start discussion in the repo ping us that there's no such file ask who should be in the file and an open a pull request just help us out please now make sure all PRs checks are green again I emphasize on it but please this will speed up things otherwise it really slows down because if I for example go to APR something is red so I was already kind of ready to review your PR but tests were failing I'm just gonna ping you like fix tests and again we'll jump to some other duties and it, it will take time again until I will come back to your PR so just for for your sake like for for the speed of the PR if you want to get it merged fast please make sure uh, that the quality of the PR is 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 good and then you have to iterate <coughs> I already mentioned like um, one PR will not make you an expert in the project if you want to learn the project well you will have to iterate a few times pick some easy tasks at the beginning then some bug fixes and then one then once you're sure about everything um, pick up some existing issues about new features have discussion accept solution and 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 create PR and then join as code owner now don't worry committers will notice you if, if you're committer in the repo you still see pull requests who you interact with um, you're, you're gonna see that there's a, a single 
committer regularly pushing code and um and automatically committer will know if when is the right moment to to trust that given person knows the project and and looks like want to regularly help so you will be most probably invited by the committer but we're all humans we might overlook something we might just to be too busy so if you know already that you've put a lot of love in the project or you did some PRs but you're not sure if that's the right moment open up an issue just openly talk to us um, no offense will be taken it's actually gonna be understood as a as a good signal about you open an issue demonstrate in the issue list all the PRs that you completed everything you know about the project and once you do it um, the the committer will tell you if that's the right moment to, to join as committer or will just give you an advice like okay like please maybe do one more feature uh, so we know um, if all is good and then become a TSC member there's a spot waiting for you so yeah um, there's a bunch of links that I did not have in the main presentation that you definitely have to look at as a candidate for technical steering committee first link is a charter that we officially signed with Linux Foundation that describes the open governance model it's super boring because it's in legal language but you still have to read it or trust us that we explain it well to you now the next link is the um, Google group where the decisions are being taken another link is a place for discussions about ideas so if you want to take the path of a project initiator um, first discuss it with the community like what idea you have and if community is like thrilled with your idea and would like to see it in the in the async API organization if we're gonna see that community is like super happy like come on in we're gonna create a repo for you and run it man now um, next link is um, it's a slide deck so it's a template for all the presentations uh, that you can do about async API with async API brand so um, this slide deck that you can see about with my presentation was created basing on on this uh, default um, slide deck so definitely if you want to make it easier for you to preach about async API um, please take it the link to community repo labels slash meeting is a link to a place where you're gonna learn about all the meetings that are in the initiative like happening at the moment in a week or in two weeks and among them you're gonna see those contributor first meetings um, so if you want to join them and talk live with with me and other uh, committers uh, feel free to just jump in in the comments let us know what you'd like to um, hear about in a given uh, live stream um, and yeah engage with us and last but not least is the link to sonar cloud so I already told you we scan projects so yeah go to sonar cloud there's a list of all the projects that we scan all the issues don't look at conference website repo and the amount of issues that's there the same with playground um, yeah long story I'm super open to tell you more about it now more links git workflow there's an instruction how you should configure your fork I highly recommend you don't try to find a different solution use ours because it already proved uh, be good now you want to read more about conventional commits like the prefixes in the in the commit messages that's another link then if you want to recognize contribution contributions in your projects the same way we do we use all contributors so read more about the spec uh, with the next link the TSC members list there are two links the first one TSC members JSON it's a technical file where we keep the names and all the references but we nicely render the display on the website 
under the last link. So pretty much a lot, but it's worth it, right? So thank you. Thank you so much for um, yeah, giving me this opportunity to bore you about uh, contributing to Async API. But yeah, I, I really count. I really count on you that um, I did not scare you. I actually encourage you to join Async API Technica String Committee member. Um, take those challenges path. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, see you in the group of TSC members.